Crawley fans, welcome to episode one of Getting to Know. Our first guest is Nick Sarula. First of all, Nick, two accolades today, two awards, mm. Crawley Observer, Player of the Month, and Football League World, League Two Player of the Month. How does that feel? No, it's nice. Um, you know, I'm really proud of the awards. But, you know, like I said before, you know, they don't come. It's a cliche line, but they don't come without the other 10 players and, you know, the whole squad as well. So uh, I'm grateful that we've got a talented bunch and they help help bring the best out of me. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm proud, proud for the awards. Today is going to be about everything off the pitch. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about music, food, film, yeah. everything. We'll start off with Netflix. Are you a keen Netflix watcher? Uh, every now and then, yeah. And I've got a bit of spare time on my hands. Any series recently that kind of... Uh, just finished watching the Squid Games, oh, which is quite Squid good. Game. Yeah. But you can't watch it dubbed. You have to watch it in Korean. Oh, you're on that side? With the subtitles. Why is that though? Because their mouths are still moving and the line's finished. Is, it just doesn't yeah, go. Do you really want to be sat there listening to Korean? Just watching it's authentic. Subtitles? It's real. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Cultural. Really cultural. <laughs> is there a, a series on Netflix that is the best one ever? Put a statement out. Best you've ever seen. Netflix. Mm. Doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be Netflix. Any any kind of series. I think Game of Thrones has to be. Yeah. Has to be up there. Vikings was good. Breaking Bad. Prison Break. Oh, Prison Break. I didn't really. It was okay. <sighs> Stranger Things, yeah, Stranger, yeah, 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 that's up. That's got to be up there. On an away day, mm. is it Netflix your go-to on a, on a long haul? Is it more music, games? What what do you kind um, of get up to on the way? Up Marcus does some good games. He gets the odd bingo going uh, okay. <laughs> on on the coach, and when we get there, um, he sort of makes up these own quizzes. I, I don't know how he does it because they're brilliant. Um, but yeah, it's nice. They pass the time. Yeah, music wise, I'm going to ask you: Are you, mm. are you more of a rap guy? Are you a rock guy? Are you an R and B guy? I'm a little bit of everything. Um, I like old school R and B. Yeah. Um, today, today has a bit of Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande. Okay. That's okay. the sweet side coming yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I like the old school R and B. Bit of pop smoke as well. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a bit, a bit random. I like to mix it up on a match day as well. Just, does, does music change? There's certain songs like I like to keep private what I listen to on a match really? day. But it's calm. Mm. It's calm music. Um, is it a bit of like superstitional music? It is, yeah. They, they sort of like put me in the zone, but I'm, I'm not going to expose <laughs> who I listen to or what kind of music. But yeah, would you say you know? Would you say you're a superstitional guy? Would you say there's certain things you do on a match day? Badly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a lot of superstition. Um, it's a little bit stupid to be honest, but it just helps mentally. They're not ones you want to you want to give away. Um, it's them. just silly little things like stepping onto the pitch with my left foot first. Um, always have to have at least a bite of a banana before a game. Yeah. Pre-match food has to be sweet potato. Just little, yeah. Not, I'm not fussy, am I? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just little things. So for a home game, we'll do a day in the life of Nick Cerula. Mm. From the from the moment you wake up before a match, yeah. what's going on? So I wake up. Um, I probably have breakfast. Um, I'll probably go back to sleep. I sleep a lot before games. Really? Yeah. yeah. I like to sort of really um, save all my energy. Yeah. Um, I'll just you know do my mobility and. My foam roller that I carry around with me everywhere that I get banded for, but um, that helps me out. So I'll make sure I'm sort of loose, stretched out and uh, ready ready to go. you one of those who's got one of those massage guns? <laughs> no, not the guns. I've got a cool little, uh, <laughs> cool little folding uh, foam roller, sort of like fits in my bag. Yeah. Pop it out. That goes everywhere. Like, oh, it? it goes everywhere. I get a little stick for it, but um, <laughs> oh, it works well. It does the job, though. It does the job. It does well. Food as well. So you mentioned about banana, the sweet yeah, potato. Yeah. On a match day, is there anything else you'd eat, or is there anything you'd eat in particular after a game? Maybe as a little. Um, <laughs> yeah, I get bantered for my little. Um, they call it cat food, but oh, it's sort of my. Um, you, you've rung a bell. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh, go, yeah. my tuna and pasta little pot. Yeah, um, which I pick up from the petrol station, which is they're really nice. Um, good uh, nutritious stuff, but yeah, I, I get yeah. great source of protein. But yeah, I get a lot of stick for that. Do you ever, as a kind of a professional footballer, do you ever get a cheat day? Is there a day mm. where you can eat what you want? Do you have to stick to a proper nutritional diet? Uh, I like to eat quite clean, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, if we go out for, for a meal for someone's birthday, I'll sort of treat mm. myself um, a little what bit. What kind of cu cuisine are you feeling? If you had to pick night out, maybe say it's your birthday, where yeah. would you go? What? Well, I don't know. I, I like my Mediterranean diet. So we'll go to okay. we'll find a nice Greek restaurant oh. somewhere, <laughs> which uh, the gaffer banters me for. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll probably go for that. <laughs> and sports other than football mm. obviously you know you're a footballer but yeah. growing up when you were young any other sports you were playing um i like tennis growing up um sort of martial arts i love watching ufc 
Um, but also, I've got into big, like the American sports, especially NFL. Um, you know, the games are on quite late, but when they're on at a reasonable time here, um, I'll make sure I always, I always watch it. Was the dream for you always to be a footballer? Or was there actually another sport? Did you think perhaps you could go into tennis and something else? Um, to be honest, I've always wanted to be a footballer since mm. I was about four years old. Yeah. Um, I sort of knew what I wanted. There was a time where I enjoyed playing a bit of tennis and stuff, but I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to. I know what I want. So you turn up to there in a nice little black Audi. Is there a dream car you've got going forward? Is there one in particular? Um, it would be pretty quick. The James Bond Aston Martin. The, um, oh, yeah. But not the old school one, like the new... The new, okay. new stuff, but yeah, maybe one day I'll roll up, roll up to Crawley and roll Aston Martin, you know? <laughs> black suit and a couple of gadgets here and there. No, but I'd say, yeah, probably something like that. We know, obviously, we'll go back. Leeds goal is fantastic. Mm. We won't touch on that anymore no. because I know that you said that you yeah. don't want that moment to define you, yeah. which I think is a brilliant statement. Mm -hmm. Two more this season already. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that helped towards the awards you've received. Out of those two goals, which one did you prefer? What what felt better? Oh, uh, I think. I think they were very different. The Carlisle one was relief. Um, just, I don't know, it was a night of minute, wasn't it? The top yeah. had to come off and yeah. <laughs> get in with the fans. And talk, I was head talk, to head with one of the fans. Talk and, to me about that knee slide as well. Yeah, then someone's put a little hole there and they've stitched me up, to be honest, because yeah. I'm playing the groundsman for that. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking with that. I sort of went, went a little bit crazy. Um, but yeah, got stuck in the ground. Stylishly did a little roly poly. Yeah, try and sort of stylishly play that one off. Uh, but that was a great moment. But did you think, kind of as a fullback joining the club, did you think you'd score as many as three? Only, only kind of a season into your, your time. Um, I try not to overthink things, to be honest, and just sort of see what happens when I'm out there. But um, it's definitely something that I want to continue to add to my game because you know it helps the team win. But um, ultimately, my job is to defend and you know help going forward and provide a different attacking option for the team. Which um, you know it's good that I can give that. I think we were, I was watching you obviously speak to, to Mark Dunford mm. of the Crawley Observer after, um, after our interview and he kind of said the same thing. But how is it working under John Yems and Lee Bradbury? We know there's a there's a great relationship between mm. yourself and the gaffer. We've seen so yeah. many jokes. Yeah. He winds you up. He does. Yeah. How, how is it? He's brilliant. He's, he's brilliant. I can't speak highly enough of him. Um, you know, I was saying before, after the game, I sort of know what I've done well, but he'll come out and he'll show me what I haven't done. And yeah. he's like, OK, well, you need to have a look at that or... What do you think you could have done better here? And you know, he's he's a great man manager as well. He knows, you know, he has to be different with everyone. But he's been absolutely brilliant with me, and you know, I look forward to continue to to develop under him. Mm. And off the field, do you think you're like an ultra critical player? Do you really look at every fine detail? Or... Yeah, I, I'll analyse every game. I'm quite sick like that. I'll sort yeah. of, I've got all the notes on the on my phone and every minute, good and bad. Um, but yeah, after games, I like to to see what. I've, what I haven't done well and what I have done that I need to continue doing. I think I recall you telling me you were an Arsenal fan. Mm. You were part of the Tottenham Academy. Yeah. How did that come about and how did that work? Oh, I blame my parents, to be honest. They, uh, <laughs> they took me to the wrong place. No, I'm joking. I've, I had, had a great great time at Spurs. Um, you know, I'm grateful for all the people that helped sort of, you know, help develop me into the mm. player I am today. And I probably wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, where I am without that help there at Spurs. So, yeah, it was a bit of a mixed one, but... Um, still an Arsenal fan at heart. And you said you wanted to be a footballer since the age of mm. four. Was there someone, a particular footballer at the age of four that you really looked up to? Um, I sort of, I never really had like one footballer. I sort of tried to take little pieces from everyone. Yeah. So, you know, when I was young, I used to like watching clips of Maradona and, and Messi, obviously, and Hazard in the sort of attacking final third. But, you know, as a left-back role, um, you know, watching people like Danny Rose and Luke mm. Shaw, I sort of go and analyse their games. Um off the pitch and sort of see what they're doing and see if I can implement, you know, anything that they do in my game. It, on an international basis, obviously, mm -hmm. as well, we know you can qualify to play mm -hmm. for Cyprus. Is that something you want to look going forward at? Or I think at the minute my focus is is here um, and, you know, trying to help the team win and play as many games as possible. Yeah. I'm proud to have played for, for Cyprus, but, um, yeah, now we'll see what, see what the future holds with that. Would you say Cyprus, because obviously you're from mm. there, is that, is that the place you want to go on holidays? Is that your, your, the best destination? Or is there somewhere you haven't been yet or you have been that yeah. you return to? I don't know. I like to explore different places. It's yeah. always nice going going to Cyprus and they've got some you know, lovely, lovely areas uh, yeah. and places that my grandparents are from. But, um, I, you know, I'm very blessed my family take us to different places, um, you know, in different years. And I've had some great memories with them. Anywhere you've got in mind for next summer, do you think? Next summer. 
I'm not sure. We'll have to see. I'll have to have a think <laughs> about that. Nick, it's been great talking, yeah. mate. Um, obviously, big trip to, to Rochdale coming up. How are, you, how are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, we know it'll be tough. We have to bring our A game. You know, every game in this league is tough. I've said it before. There's no there's no easy game. But, um, you know, our boys will do the best we can and we'll, we'll see if we can bring, bring home a result. Will do. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of you Crawley fans up at Rochdale as well. We know it's another big trip, but hopefully, we can come away with the result. Nick, Nothing. thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.